Welcome back race fans, welcome to Wasteland Raceway. Today, second part of building a car. The first part is how to drill a car. And watch that first and then carry on. Now the car is drilled, it's all taken apart. We're on the bench, this is what you're left with. That for now. Interior, we need that for now. Basic body plastic or metal depending on what car you've got and um, you can either leave the glass in I don't have the glass for this one as I don't like it you can mesh it out or leave it blank depending on how you feel and meshing it out several different options you can use screen tape and in your local hardware store you can use both colanders or sieves or whatever we want to call them. Cheapo ones for the pound shop used to cut up. I use a mixture of this stuff. It's flexy, it's fantastic. And this is from Mantic, their walking dead range. They've got um, some fences for the prison. You can get this, it comes with an A4 sheet. It's about 15 quid. Get a couple of fence posts and bases but um, a shed load of this stuff that stuff is absolutely brilliant now the other stuff I use is this this is a metal scrim tape very sharp when you cut it but again there you go mesh it up it is tinny it does fold it does get into the positions it's more difficult to use so we're going to be using that today and we go back to our plastic scrim tape here. That plastic mantic scrim. It is flexible. If you pull it, it will stretch. Don't pull it. You use a little piece here, smaller piece. It's quite simple. You get the car. I normally put it in. Roughly measure the size that you reckon it's going to be. And quite simply. Tiny a little bit. And then make sure it fits roughly inside, like so. Power shop super glue. I haven't opened yet. And just line around there. You can do this with a finger or a pair of tweezers. Use a sculpting tool. And you push it down. Push it down. Wait till it starts to stick. If you've got an accelerant. Great. I'm not going to use one of them. Give it a stick in the house now. And there. Side window. Up. And we'll do the rest and we'll carry on. So that is window done. Next step I found rather important, make sure the car fits on the base. Now as you can see it's not pretty and there's enough to put this you're not going to miss it. But where these are designed to fit properly, it doesn't quite sit in perfectly. So you've got to make sure if you push it up will stay and that will stay fine I've just trimmed it a little bit so it does and um, then take it off because otherwise that glue will stick to the inside of that I know that sounds straightforward and simple but the amount of cars I've had to redo because I've done that not ideal after that your next step is to armor plate and weapons most of my cars don't have weapons and I don't like modeling them on, I like the simplicity. Anyone that's watched the videos will know slightly disgruntled out, <coughs> no weapons on this one at all, uh, but armour plating. You could magnetise them and pop them on, but if you do want to model them on, there are plenty of options out there. I've got some 
old Games Workshop bits, 40k bits. Uh, my sort of flamethrower. I've been collecting bits and pieces for years. And um, that is a piece from an old zombie game. And you just kind of choose the little bits and pieces you want and you can cut them up. You can use the implements of Carnage. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those bits with me. And um, these are a couple of bits I've got left over from an old one, waiting for my order to turn up. Get my rams, rocket launchers, got a little harpoon, some exhaust bits, loads of guns, loads of armor. They are a brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. Definitely, if this is something you're going to get into, get them. And this is a bolt action sprue that I've got handy, just to show that you don't have to use bits from specific things and um, so you just cut that section off there and you've got yourself a, a, a turret of a gun there a barrel of a gun that rocket launch is going to come out at some point I have pre-snipped some bits off and um, a couple of bits there see and just to show you not, as a gun is not in scale quite clearly it's not in scale it's different scale but your trusty craft knife, you uh, just snip a section off. So just kind of end of the barrel, the start of the gun. You can snip that off and lose it in the carpet. Find it again in the carpet and just snip that little section off doesn't come out well can there's a tiny little section there just trimming it down trim it off so it's nice and flat nice and flush and then position it where you want stick it on the front stick it on the side stick it on the top so play around with it try fitting it's always the way to go sometimes a little bit of blue tack helps just to hold it in spot in the position that you want in. It's quite handy to, to do. Yeah, just kind of have a play around guys. Bit as little or as much one as you like. That's what the harpoon looks like on the top. Again some beautiful bits in there, implements of carnage. CMG42. Russian MG42. Again, you can stick those two. There's two. You come with two. You can stick them together. But I quite like the little little metal piece. It looks like it's been bolted on. There's the uh, the ram. Make sure you stick the ram to the right section. And also, when you stick the ram on, make sure it doesn't stick any of the other bits of car together. Because I've done that one before. So after you stuck it all together you're happy with it, on to the next bit. And then your next step after that is, if you want to, damage and armour plating. My long-term rival and good friend Kinky Weasel has done a tutorial on making armour plates. I have two here that I prepared earlier. And they are Basically, foil, and this is off of a 15 replacement lozenge pack. That's why I've cracked this to it work at the moment. And um, they're quite, in fact, I don't know if you can hear that, quite firm um, tin foil. I've tried it with thick kitchen tin foil, it does not work. Um, so, yeah, this he uses. Um, bits you can get from coffee, so the, the film, uh, metal film inside the coffee. Uh, round a little piece of paper, inside the right inside, piece of paper, fold it over, four point pen, punch the rivets into there, and then you just decide where they're going to go. Here. 
side. And there you go. Just sand and everything. A little bit of super glue. Turn over I usually use quite a bit for these. Just seals the back in quite nicely. Pop it on, move it around, get it to the final spot that you want it to go on. I do use tweezers for this one. And I'll just push down the corners. So, make it stick and then I run around the edges. I just want to pull out very well on camera, but just run around the edges there and just push down and it makes kind of a folded effect on the tin foil. Maybe do another one just here. Same again. Nice block of super glue. It's just a cheap pound shop super glue, nothing special. Don't need to go all out. Best lines can be as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be. I like it cheap. And there, two armor plates done. And then for your damage. Plastic bodies are quite easy to do um, by the panel, just with a sculpting tool here or a screw or something like that, or a nail. Just scratch away at the plastic there. Give it a scratch. Got a craft knife. Take a chunk out the side here. okay, can take time, if you haven't got the right stuff and it can be a pain in the bum. Painted and stripped this is on half of the paint job but it come out like that. Uh, then you can uncoat it and go over the top. And I find that quite the coat it is. Basically this is matte black car body spray car body spray car paint and um, I find this goes straight over any of the cars I've never had an issue with the surface I've never had to rough them up or anything like that so that's one option other option is model colour from Vallejo it's black it's £2.95 I think on Amazon at the moment um, it's fantastic. Put a bit in. You can need two coats of this. But that is, as you see, purple flame. That covers. Covers absolutely brilliantly. I 
other paints won't stick. And this will rub off if you just rub your finger over it first time. You get a second coat under that. That will stay and then you use a matte varnish and you buy it in metal can for form. You can also get it from GW. GW do a new one. So we brought it out it's in the middle of the pot. Fantastic. And I'm just going to paint this on today. Don't have to be neat. Not simply getting a coat on the car. boring to watch but I will do the rest of that and come back and show you. There you have the undercoat body. Let's do the inside of it first. But that's that done. And front, you know this crank can be a bit of a pain in the bum to do. Again my dear friend Kinky Weasel has put one out a video out on stripping this. I am far too lazy for that, so I'll just paint over it. Some people will point a way to get rid of that crime on the engine, but I've got a better way of doing it. Then you just get the coat on all over. It doesn't have to be neat. You don't have to be an expert painter. Definitely not. And then that's that bit. And then let that dry. Don't put it together now, it will stick. Let it dry, give it another coat, especially on the chrome. And then we're ready for the detail. I have jumped forward a little section here. I have painted the car already. It's two coats of red. Because I'm assuming do that. I have also painted the inside and the inside of some cars are never seen. It's just usually just for your own your own self. Um, one of our watches, Pikachu Customs, which Pikachu Customs or Garage, I sorry if I got that wrong. You see the little NOS can in there, that's just for you buddy. And then all I've done here is dry brushed silver now for anyone that doesn't know what dry brushing it is sorry you get yourself a either a dry brush or an old brush load it up and then stipple it onto some paper and the idea is, is you're getting rid of most of the paint off of your um, brush it's just a, a back and forth motion is what I use it's very light and the paint will build up on the raised areas it's a bit heavier than I thought it was going to be but it will build up on the raised areas uh, giving a kind of depth effect dry brushing is a, a term that we all use and a technique that we all use um, it takes a while to get used to it but honestly it's it's so simple to do I'm doing this no justice as well. it's so so heavy but yeah, you need more, more paint off that but it works it works an absolute dream. You see there, that gun looks like it's been used. And uh, we'll get to the weathering section a bit later on. But for the time, I'm happy with that. As you can see, it's a bit later on now. <laughs> so to um, weather, um, I use the Agrax Earth Shade from Games Workshop. Uh, this is a it's a wash. It's basically very very watered down colour. Um, so you load your brush up and you quite simply slap it on. You don't have to be neat for this section. The only thing I will say, and if you watch any videos from anybody that says it, is get it on and it will start to pull. So gravity does its job and it will pull in some areas, deep recesses, or kind of the bottom section of something. So you've got, you've got plenty of time to play around with this to start with. So slap it on, 
watch where it goes if you need to just have yourself a dry brush around and just tap it on drag it around a bit move it around a bit and yeah just kind of go to town on this really there's not much else I can say about that talking for talking sake now so I will leave you with this and come back at the next stage Welcome back anyone that's stayed this long um, It's all dry now so what you do now is you try and make sure everything fits together If it doesn't fit together at this point all you need to do is kind of trim away sections with your craft knife this should all fit together, it shouldn't be an issue, but if there is, it is quite simple to do. Now we're all put back together, we're all dried. Next is a, a rusting technique. There are many rusting techniques out there, salt chipping. And again, my dear friend Kinky Weasel's put a video on about his rust technique. I like, nice and simple. Typhus Corrosion from Games Workshop. It is a gritty paint, so it's like fine sand in it. Give it a good, good mix up before you start. And it quite simply goes on the sections you want to rust up. So whether you want to rust up a panel, whether you want to rust up a ram, a gun, an engine. I don't think the engines would be rusted up. I think if you're traveling the wasteland and fighting and racing for your life, you kind of look after your engine, but your bodywork doesn't matter, you can all fall apart. It is really simple, you dab it on, paint it on, however you want to, you can do it light, you can do it heavy. I always suggest two coats with this again, just, just build up that grit uh, for the next stage. I have showed most of this process, I haven't spoken over it because you don't want to hear my monotone voice, but it's just to show that it doesn't matter how much you put on it, it is a rusty old car at the end of the day. So you can go to town it, go super duper, loads, you can just do you know one little section, it's in the whole not nearly the whole panel there, the whole the whole door section. I always kind of look where rust is on real cars, it just usually starts at the bottom where the water would pull. Or, you know, in the damagey sections there it's just always gonna rust up. And uh, more on this big ram. Because I do like a rusty ram. That now is set two coats and dry. I've had a little change of backdrop here. It's been a couple of months since I did this first part of the video. Um, we are going to get into the rusting side of the rust. So I start with a skag brown. This is again it's another dry brush um, technique in fire bright orange. Slate oranges, two different types of orange that I use. Um, yeah, I don't know what the other, the other uh, makes of paint their colours are called, but whatever orange you want, but I start with a, a very light, I say very light, you see the colour over there, a lighty brown. And you're going for a dry brush again. And what you're doing is you're dry brushing, and this again doesn't come out on camera got a couple of snapshots at the end of the video that show but you're painting this on and it's a relatively hard dry brush and it's to get all of that paint covered if you go onto the paintwork it 
doesn't matter if you've seen any rust on any cars then you'll notice that they, it does actually mark up the paint it's not just confined to the section that has rusted and you can just dab it on, dab it on, paint it on keep that dark brown underneath as much as you like again it doesn't come out, I apologise for the the camera doing stupid stuff I couldn't redo this because I've already painted the car so yeah just go at it like this and I'll, uh, I'll come back when the colour changes Okay, colour change time, important to let the first colour dry completely, uh, usually takes about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, um, otherwise you get some kind of horrible mixing which ruins all the hard work you've just done. So I'm starting now with the darker orange of the two and this is a lighter dry brush and you're trying to hit most of it but kind of it really accentuates on the, the grainy parts um, of the of the typhus corrosion which is why I like it and some people are, are better painters than I am and they will blend stuff in wet blend and all of these things that you'll hear on other videos I'm lazy I am not very good so this is the easiest technique for me you can see the difference there in the section that I've done and the section that I haven't done uh, then you start with the, the lighter orange which is the troll slayer I believe and what you're doing is you literally just want to catch the tops of the grains and it just adds like a depth effect really now this works really well on corners as well if you've got like a, a corner section I say on the back of that tailgate that you just want to rust up a little bit with the very light dry brush. I really, really apologise for the camera, it's not doing us any justice and it looks like a hot mess at the moment. But I promise that it does the job. As you can see from the previous video, we have got Rustilla. Rustilla is exactly the same car, I've just stuck a tank on the bottom of it. Uh, and it's used the same technique, just 100% typhus corrosion over it with the same paints. Um, yes, you can see it's come out quite well. This was my train that I did for Car of the Month for December. Again, same technique used is the typhus corrosion. very grainy and shake it up, shake it up a lot, stir it up a lot. Don't add any water to it because you just dilute it more. I know people have done that before. And it doesn't work. If anything, leave the lid open for in a couple of hours, dry yourself out a little bit, get rid of some of that water. And that is where you could leave it. Or you've got a couple of options from there. You can just um, either varnish it so nothing comes off obviously going to be playing with these cars and um, you can add some scratches or bits and pieces on with some more silver or you can uh, dirty them up we play on a on a dusty mat a dusty surface surface uh, but you can equally get kind of mud uh, textures and stuff from games workshop as well all I use here is sandry dust and again we're going to dry brush it Dry brushing is something. If you can, if you can get this down, dry brushing is. It's fantastic. It's so so easy to make it look as professional as you can. And all you're doing here is dry brushing onto the wheels. That was heavier than I thought it was going to be again. Apologies. And yeah, you're dry brushing it on to where you think 
the mud and dirt would get. So it's always on the arches and the bottom of the car. Again, you can go as heavy or as light with this as you want. It's a step you don't have to take. I can't stress that enough. If you want your cars looking pretty, don't do any of the rusting or any of the weathering at all. If you want them looking dusty and beaten up as hell, do more of this than you, you would do normally. If you do it all in one direction, it will flick up. And it will look like dirt has flicked up. It's something I've learned if you go kind of go back and forth, it, the paint doesn't really work very well. That's my my opinion. It's not the opinion of everybody else. I know everyone's got their own techniques that they like to use. But yeah, just dusty it up, make it look even more disheveled than it is. Some people say it's a, a waste of time after you spent all of that time on making your, your car look really pretty. It's the idea of these cars is that they have been absolutely destroyed and used and abused. And they are a, a means to get what you want in the wasteland. So yeah, mess it up like so. You can go on with, okay, if you want to go on another brown or something like that, you can do. Right, let's have a look at some steels. Here it is now finished on the turnstile. It's, there's a bit of a bright brightness to that camera. My lighting's not very good, I need to sort all this out, I do apologise. But, as you can see, that's not bad, it's taken me all in all actual work time probably I don't know an hour tops to get this finished which isn't long and uh, yeah if someone turned up to play me with that I'd be more than happy you take as long or as uh, short as you want to to do really it's your car I've got a couple of better Better shots here of it, just some steels. As I said, it's, it's so simple. The techniques are the easiest ones I can do because as I said I'm not not top notch painter. It's a better one of Rustilla there, exactly the same technique. So I hope that has inspired you to jump in and start cutting open your cars and destroying them that have been sat on the shelf for so long. Uh, any questions, any comments, please chuck them down and we'll try to reply as much as we can. Until next time.